how the sky moves. Look up on a clear night and you'll notice that the sky looks like a vast dome with stars fixed to its inner surface. If the earth were transparent, you'd see the stars on the other half of the starry sphere below your feet, and you'd get the impression that you were standing at the center of a velvety black sphere speckled with stars. Astronomers call this the celestial sphere. The earth spins in space, rotating once a day on its axis. But from an observer's point of view, the Earth appears to remain still while the celestial sphere seems to rotate once a day around an axis that runs from the North Celestial Pole to the South Celestial Pole. These imaginary points are above the Earth's North and South Poles, so all the stars, planets, moon, and sun on the celestial sphere also appear to move all the way around the sky once each day, rising in the east and setting in the west. The North Star, Polaris, lies very near the rotational axis of the celestial sphere, right about the Earth's North Pole. Since it's almost right on the North Celestial Pole, Polaris appears to stay fixed in the night sky all night and all year. Any other star on the celestial sphere south of Polaris rotates in circles around the pole star. Stars above the Earth's equator rotate in circles with the largest diameters during their daily motion across the celestial sphere. And south of the equator, stars trace out circles with smaller apparent diameters as they lie closer to the south celestial pole. Now, there is no bright star, no southern star that corresponds to Polaris at the south celestial pole. Like the stars and planets, the sun also appears to move on the celestial sphere. If you measure the time when the sun is highest in the sky, you'll find it takes exactly 24 hours for the sun to move all the way around the celestial sphere and return to its highest point. In fact, that's how we define a day, or what astronomers call a solar day. It's a little different with stars. If you go out at night and select a star to observe and measure its position on the celestial sphere, you'll find it takes almost 24 hours to move all the way around and get back to the same spot. If you measure accurately, you'd find it only takes 23 hours and 56 minutes for a star to get back to the same position in the sky where it was the night before. That's because during the day, the Earth revolved around the Sun by 1 365th of its orbit. So each day, you look at a slightly different direction in space, and every star appears to rise 4 minutes earlier each night. In two weeks, the star rises about an hour earlier. In one month, the star rises two hours earlier, and in 12 months, it appears to move all the way around the sky back to the position at which you first saw it in, in the previous year. This apparent motion, where the stars rise a little earlier and each night, explains why the stars you see in the winter sky are different than what you see in the spring, the summer, and the autumn. Celestial Coordinates Maps of the Earth are marked with latitude and longitude, a north-south-east-west grid system that helps us locate places on the Earth's surface. Latitude measures degrees how far north or south of the equator a place lies. The equator has a latitude of zero degrees, the north and south poles have a latitude of 90 degrees north and 90 degrees south respectively. Chicago has a latitude of 41.8 degrees north, Sydney, Australia has a latitude of 34 degrees south. Longitude measures how far east and west a place lies on the Earth's surface. But how far east and west of what? The current reference point of longitude is the great circle that runs through the Earth's poles and the Royal Greenwich Observatory in London, UK. So, Greenwich is the zero degree longitude. Chicago, west of Greenwich, has a longitude of 88 degrees west. Sydney, has, Sydney, east of London, is longitude 151 degrees east. So, why is all this important to you? Because astronomers locate things in the sky using a celestial equivalent of longitude and latitude. Imagine the Earth's equator lines of latitude and longitude projected outwards onto the celestial sphere. The celestial equator lies directly above the Earth's equator, and the north and south celestial poles 
are above the Earth's celestial, or the Earth's north and south poles. Lines of latitude and longitude are there as well, but in the sky, latitude is called declination. The celestial equator has a declination of zero degrees. North and south of the celestial equator, declination is marked with a plus or a minus sign. The star Vega, for example, has a declination of plus 38.8 degrees. The southern star, Akronar, has a declination of about 57 degrees. Each degree is split into 60 smaller units that we call minutes of arc measured by an apostrophe, and each minute is split into 60 seconds of arc, marked by a quotation mark. So the more precise declination of Akronar is minus 57 degrees, 14 minutes, 12 seconds. The celestial equivalent to longitude is right ascension. It's measured not in degrees, but in hours from 0 to 24. Astronomers cooked up this arrangement long ago because of the celestial sphere appears to turn once every 24 hours. With 24 hours in the, f in the full 360 degrees of sky, each hour co corresponds to 15 degrees of angular distance. Like degrees, each hour is split into 60 minutes and 60 seconds. So the right ascension of Akronar, for example, is 1 hour, 37 minutes, 43 seconds. Vega is at right ascension 18 hours, 36 minutes, 56 seconds. The Great Circle, with a right ascension of zero hours, runs through the point in the constellation Pisces at which the ecliptic crosses the celestial equator and right ascension increases going eastward. So that's the basics of the celestial coordinate system. You'll see these numbers in astronomy books and magazines to describe the positions of objects on the celestial sphere. And you'll see the coordinates marked on the pages of star atlases to help you find things.